Have you checked the Hey everyone, welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And again, Jaime and Fuego here. And we are here to discuss the brand new release, The Exorcist Believer, which is the first in a new trilogy that we have coming our way, courtesy of David Gordon Green, the man behind the most recent Halloween trilogy from 2018 to yeah. ends. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of mixed opinions on that, and uh, we don't need to rehash all of our mixed opinions on that, necessarily. I'm sure we'll touch on it throughout the course of the review, but... Totally different scenario here. Indeed. <laughs> We're here to talk about The Exorcist Believer, which is the first exorcism, or exorcist movie in many, many years. There was two seasons of a TV show... A yeah, few which years I, back. Yeah, which I know you and Marsha really enjoyed. We did. We did enjoy yeah. it. It was it was interesting. It it uh, you know Gina Davis was uh, a key figure in the first season, which we hadn't seen a lot of her, and then John Cho was a key figure in the second season, nice. and um, he's uh, uber talented, you know. Oh yeah. So so yeah, it, it was really entertaining, and both of those, especially the first season, ended up being a sequel to the first movie that no one knew was coming. Mm -hmm. um, now that continuity has been sidestepped and, uh, and now we are reestablished back with the original film's continuity and technically the second film too could fit in the continuity. There's nothing that contrasted what happened in the second film in this movie. Or even the exceptional third film, which was kind of a pivot sidestep anyway. With right. Legion, well, and know, I guess, so. yeah, technically Karis appeared in that, right? He so, does. At the, yeah. At the end. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, this uh, this movie is its own thing, but it is a sequel to the original film, uh, you know, years later, much like Halloween 2018 yeah. was, and it is directed by the same guy behind Gordon that. Green. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in fact, um, some of the scripters were similar as well, because I believe Danny McBride had a hand yes. in the Halloween series as well. He yeah, has a but... hand here too. Yeah, with La, La Flama Blanco getting involved in these horror franchises, it still just, like, trips me out, man. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Danny McGregor, man. He's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Exorcist Believer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we do our reviews talking about our overall thoughts. Then we talk about the story, the acting, the effects, all of that good stuff. In turn, we try and break it down on a real basis, a filmmaking sort of basis. And my overall thoughts are I enjoyed this film very much like i wasn't expecting to hate it i wasn't expecting to love it i did enjoy the trailers we reacted to i think two trailers on the channel leading up to the film and I, in one of the trailer reactions i said I, i'm an easy target like this mm -hmm. looks good to me you know i don't know what to say but i'm enjoying what i'm seeing and i had a lot of people in the comments of that trailer reaction i think it was our first exorcist believer trailer reaction that were like i'm in on this too like there's so many people hating on it just because but this made me excited it made it look good and to me the film delivered on mm. what i saw in those trailers which was it looked like a similar but interesting new take within the universe that was established in the original film um, not just one girl is possessed but two different girls are possessed and uh, what happens when that is the case, when there's two different families involved. And while it seems maybe like a rote sort of difference between the two, there's obviously a lot more to it than just that. Um, and I had a really good time with the film. My overall thoughts were, I, I, or are rather, I enjoyed this film more than I expected to. The end, while we are not going to spoil anything, this is going to be a non-spoiler review, I will say the end kicked me in the nuts way more than I thought it was going to. Uh -huh. And, uh, like, it hit me hard. I was, I was wiping away stuff from my face that I was, like, someone was chopping onions nearby, and I don't know who it was. <laughs> there was some kind of ninja with onions <clears throat> and a knife nearby. Um, yeah, granted, I'm a lot of that. Of the Concord song. <laughs> I'm just cutting onion. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a I'm a father now, right? I've been yeah. a father for for a little more than two and a half years at this point, and certain yeah. things hit differently. I'm sure if I had seen the original Exorcist after being a father, I would have felt differently about it. Um, this is two daughters 
getting attacked by demons yeah. and as a father that now has a daughter that's seven you know obviously a lot younger than the girls in the film but still old enough to understand and heaven forbid ever go through yeah. something like this you know what i mean um i was just impressed with the amount of emotion it brought out of me i quite enjoyed the direction and the cinematography all of it yeah. to me here's perhaps a controversial statement but to me it feels like david gordon green loves the exorcist franchise more than the halloween franchise i completely concur with that it, it felt at times that he was going through the motions especially with like the second and the third film in the halloween franchise so you know we, we can't help but compare um this film impressed me too man and unlike you having seen trailers and stuff i went in more or less completely blind wow all i knew was that ellen burstein was returning and that it was going to be one of these legacy sequel sort of situations but i was most impressed with the fact that they took their time with this one and the first very much so the, almost the first hour of this movie is prisoners you know which is an exceptional <laughs> movie starring hugh jackman Paul it Dan, is set up it's, of, yeah, yeah. But 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 it's it's set up for the emotional payoff of the severity of the situation, and for that reason, like it hits so much harder when you start to just find the full grasp of what is transpiring with these two girls. And um, I'm not going to say that it's like a masterpiece or anything of that nature, but um, it it was masterfully done in a lot of ways, especially and. and We'll get into performances and stuff, but Leslie Odom Jr. is like a revelation in this movie, man. He is such a great lead character, and, you know, he's the person having the crisis of faith in this in comparison with, you know, he somebody at the clergy. So well. And he is awesome in this. I, I saw him initially in Hamilton, and then he's gone on to do all kinds of other things. And so that it's like kind of a a drama for the first half, and then it veers into what I was expecting it to be in the second half, and it it just really left me wanting you know a second and a third installment so they they succeeded in that regard for sure and uh and yeah i i gotta say i took note of the fact that as we were nearing the end i was like this film has cruised i haven't thought about time passing once mm -hmm. in this film it's kept my attention the entire time but i also took note about an hour in going like Man, we haven't even really technically gotten to the juice yet, mm -hmm. but I'm still super engaged. Yeah. Like I and and I took note within the first 10 minutes of the character building. I was yeah. like they're making me care more about these main characters. Like it's interesting how they tell it. Leslie Odom Jr. and his daughter are like the the main characters of the story. The other yeah. family are sort of secondary. Um you don't get as much time with them and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but you know, you don't need it to appreciate the story the film is telling because it's very much focused mm -hmm. on on Leslie and his family, right? So, but, but but it also intriguingly explores. You know, it doesn't beat you over the head about the fact that there is tension in a place like Georgia with different races and different families, yeah. and friendships and stuff like that. They don't. They're they're not overt about it, but it's definitely shown in a few scenes and that it's kind of pivotal for that sort of area of the country too i would say agreed so, yeah. so the story of the film is basically we're we're in this part of the u.s and uh the our main character god i can't even remember what his character's name was but mm -hmm. um but he and his daughter we actually start off in haiti um as we see the backstory of it says it says tanner that's tanner how... okay yeah. <laughs> so we see the backstory of tanner and his wife mm -hmm. And, and uh, which is heart heartbreakingly tragic obviously. but but it evokes the yeah. style of it very much gives exorcist one mm -hmm. uh middle eastern yep where they're you know, excavating everything in iraq right like, right it yeah, very much yeah. gives that style but in a different way and so like from the jump i was like wow this is this is this is this has potential this has mm. potential let's see where they go and uh, and so we get the backstory as to Tanner and his daughter, <clears throat> and uh, and then we see them as when she's going to high school, right? And uh, and and they have this wonderful little relationship. They have a little game that they play inside their house, you know, a, yeah, a kind of yeah. pseudo tag, so to speak, it was uh, super pseudo cute. hide and seek. Yeah, yeah. It's super cute. Yeah. <laughs> it and made it, me it, smile, man. <laughs> it totally again. 
they really da uh, david gordon green or yeah joseph gordon green right dave david, david gordon green i said it right DGG. the first time dgg yeah. right 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 yeah uh, I was going to say Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That's where I was getting that yeah. mixed in. Okay, so David Gordon Green uh, knows his way around building characters when he gives it time. When he's not beholden to a slasher that he needs to fucking tie yeah. into stuff. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. This this franchise, the Exorcist franchise, is much more about a slow, methodical sort of build anyway, as opposed to like the shock and awe slasher mm -hmm. nastiness of Halloween. So, yeah, agreed, yeah. agreed. And I think it suits him. Personally, mm -hmm. I think this suits him more based on this film agree and and yeah. so yeah we uh we meet we meet his daughter uh, tanner's daughter and we see that she has a friend and she's supposed to go and study with that friend and then something happens and they disappear and yeah. nobody knows where they've gone and then a certain time uh, a certain amount of time later they reappear three and, days yeah. <clears throat> well i was trying to be oh i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay it's all right it's all right <laughs> Um, it still doesn't explain like yeah you're right you're right you're right you're right later yeah you're right you're right yeah. but nonetheless so so they appear later and and they're different and mm -hmm. it turns out they are now both possessed by something and it's up to their families their folks and the immediate friends that get involved that you learn about along the way to try and help the situation yeah, um, that's as much as we yeah that's as much as we want to go into Mm -hmm. uh, without, you know, uh, spoiling anything, but honestly, it was enough for me. The only issue that I will say I had is that the first movie very much plays up how long and arduous the exorcism process is. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't necessarily the case here. Um, yeah. you know, it was a bit truncated, but it's because mm -hmm. it was allowing for time to develop everything, everything else. Now, and also the original I'm, film is over two hours and this one is right around the buck 40. And so that's that what that I'm reason. saying. I think yeah. they actually could have gone to two hours mm -hmm. and we would have been okay. We would have gotten a little bit of everything that we needed. I would have, I, I would have totally been okay with that because yeah. that, that, that echoes one of my only criticisms about the fact that once it finally got to what I was expecting the film to be, it, it, it was done very like quickly, very much so. And not to the point of like super easy, barely an inconvenience or anything, <laughs> but I mean, but but still to to the degree where I, I felt like things were resolved like a little bit more quickness than I was necessarily anticipating, especially, you know, with just emphasizing the emphasis, uh, excuse me, emphasizing the emphasis. Stupid, yeah, like, super um, emphasized. <laughs> emphasizing the, the magnitude of the menace that was, you know, just inhabiting both of these girls and, um, Boy, but once they got to it, dude, it was scary and really fucked up. It was scary. You know? It was yeah. actually scary along the way. There were three different times different that I jumped. Yeah. There were a few jump scares, and I will say there were definitely a few jump scares that were attached to loud noises. Yeah. But I can't say that they, they never felt cheap. They yeah. never felt cheap. Well, no, specifically a window smack at one point, right? Um, oh, scared yeah, the yeah, shit yeah. out of the whole fucking theater. Like the yeah. whole theater, we saw it with a crowded theater. It was a preview yeah. screening, and we saw it with like, Wah! like everyone in the theater went yeah. like, Wah! Um, and then like there was giggles and relief laughter afterwards. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of movies that produce that kind of reaction nowadays, mm -hmm. where the whole theater you can feel the ripple of yeah. like, ah! and then followed up by like scant like. <laughs> like just you know oh man it was just a scare you know yeah, what i mean the ease like is maintained and like just yeah but that's <laughs> that to me is the epitome of the film going experience right that's when people aren't being annoying that's just when everyone is communally involved in the story They're think all about invested. that think They're about great. it we're yeah. all invested everyone is like and they all react, and then the giggling happens because we all reacted together. You're just like, hoo, 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 okay, we're all right. We're all but right. it's but it's <laughs> it's the most communal experience that no Agreed. one really gives credit. Where it's like, oh. it's it's hundreds of people. They're yeah. like, oh man, that was cool, right? Like, yeah. what what other place does that happen? And so that I was getting a lot of that through this film, which mm -hmm. was really nice. And granted. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a press screening that had you know the public coming to an early screening of The Exorcist, yeah. Yeah, so it was the right fans. audience. Yeah. You know, it was mm -hmm. the right audience yeah, that it was, was reacting who correctly. Were very much about the franchise would want to you know I, I mean press is a little bit different because of the fact that you're like even if you don't like the series that much you're like okay I gotta go cover it but 
the fan contingent, obviously, you know, they they were there because I overheard when I was buying my beer, there are people who got turned away because, you know, theater was full. And so yeah. there were people who wanted to see it and didn't get the opportunity. So, and I will say yeah. after the after the credits rolled, there was a buzz amongst the crowd like it wasn't qu a lot of times it's just Definitely quiet filing at the end you know yeah well for sure it was stuff, just like but, quietly yeah. filing out in a lot of in a lot of instances but this was you could hear like a subtle din of everyone just talking amongst themselves having conversations about what they just saw and i was like man there's a buzz on this one like it's gonna be interesting because there was a contingent of people on the trailer reaction that just like we're ready to hate on the movie and because i think there's, there's gonna be a lot of people that just want to hate on it but yeah, like this this was better than just us being kind I yeah think. well the first yeah. one is it's like the it's one of the holy grails right it's mm -hmm. some people say it's the scariest film of all time yeah, so well, it's a lot to live up to and yes this is the, the new scariest bloody, disgusting t-shirt that they were showing off the other day scariest film of all time and you know their new bloody disgusting merch and i was just like okay guys yeah <laughs> i mean a lot of people <laughs> say that i disagree but you know I, I personally disagree as well i love the first film but i I'm so desensitized at this point. I, I understand how groundbreaking it was to audiences 50 years ago when it first came out, though. And but so, I will say, yeah. this one had, stylistically even, mm. a lot of really cool imagery and scares <laughs> and shit. Like, stuff... Like, chopped in. Like, the editing on this was really the intriguing third, a lot of the times. The third act is strong in this, man. Yeah. And it, it really goes for it. And you and I, without spoiling stuff, we talked about one particular very brief moment that happens at the end of this film. <laughs> oh, my God. And the thing it, that literally made me tear up. Yeah, it's something we saw in Talk to Me. It's something we saw in Nope. It's, it's you know, as far as just, like, things being very dire and just the hopelessness of the feeling of the imagery <laughs> it got me yeah. it got me really like it got me really hard like i i after it happened i found myself wiping away stuff from both my eyes just because again as a yeah. father i've got a a almost three-year-old and a seven-year-old uh daughter an almost three-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter and yeah. it's so easy to put their faces in this situation and the the acting and this is a great transition the acting of this character in particular during this scene was so dire and so innocent and just mm -hmm. wrenched my heart. Like, just pulled it all the way out of my chest. And Whoa. I was like, oh my god. And like, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, I, I, I have, the only hope I have is that somehow it'll get undone in the sequel or the third movie somehow. But, but, you know, outside of that, again, and without spoiling, mm -hmm. it got me. It got me super hard. But the acting helped, you know? I thought the acting yeah. across the board was solid. The girls, though, were amazing. Going from the innocent and the good morning and all that stuff to mm -hmm. just the absolute, complete opposite. I wish we had more time with the opposite side of things. Again... Linda, I actually agree with that yeah, too. The Linda fact Hamilton's that we didn't get as much of their like shimmery, shiny, happy, you know, and even through the transitionary process, maybe that's one of my few criticisms is the fact that we didn't get to see as the demonic presence was taking hold as much. We didn't really see that. It was just like almost a switch was flipped, so to speak. But I mean, they they really embodied it once they hit it, man. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, in that third act, dude, where they are just fully possessed and just. The makeup work was exceptional and mm -hmm. you know the you know just the voice modulation and everything it, it, it was so on point and they those two girls sold it exceptionally and also just like the the sadness and the despair of these parents as they're trying to figure out first and foremost you know the the, the prisoner side of things that i was saying that the hugh jackman that were it's just like okay where are our children and then to finally find your children and realize they're in this state of amnesia where they have no idea what the hell has happened well, and, and you don't know anything. Like, I loved the conversation that the parents had back and forth. It was like a yeah. sideways conversation about, like, you know, what, what's, what's your daughter about? You know, I didn't even know yeah. my daughter was friends with your daughter. But what, why why would this happen? And then the other yeah. parents are like, well, why would it happen? You know, like, we don't know anything about your daughter either. You yeah. know, and it's like, Actually, it's really interesting stuff. Hey, do me a favor. Religious, put, put, and put the, the other back were for not. me. What's we're getting a bit of that static again. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh. It's okay. Your luscious locks, brother. 
Yeah, not as luscious as they used to be, but hey, <laughs> welcome to 40. <laughs> this hey, is this is my 40. Yeah. At least you still yeah. have the right color going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but it was like, it was the, the intermingling and like just the bickering amongst them was really interesting. And that was where like this explored so much more character depth with the parents even more so than with the, the girls necessarily. And that was intentional. And I was there for it, man. I, I found it really fascinating. It made me care about everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it was it was more about the parents than it was the girls. And and mm -hmm. I think that was a smart choice, was give yeah. us the insight into their lives yeah. and give it, us it, the time to get to know everyone. Like yeah. that hour-long lead-up, that seems like a long time. Like it feels like with an Exorcist movie, you're like, okay, they got to be possessed by a half hour in. But this movie's like, no, myself. fuck that. Yeah. No, no, we're taking our yeah. time. It took we'll get time. there when really we get did. there, you know? Yeah. And to come to fruition as magnificently as it did. And, you know, I, I have to look. Okay, so Ellen Burstein is 90 Burstein. years old. And she... Jesus, seriously? She was, dude, she was spry and sharp in this movie. Can dude. you imagine and, that The Exorcist was 48 years ago it came out? It was 1970, 1975. Was it 73? It says 73 here on oh, the Google. Uh, I thought it was 75. Googles. It says on the Google, 73. So. I feel like they would have leaned on the 50-year anniversary thing more so if that was the... Yeah. I mean, I don't think you're wrong, yeah. but I thought it was 75 for some reason. Okay, well, bottom line... No, Ellen you're right, 73 it says in yeah. Google. Yep, yeah, okay. yeah, dude, Ellen, like, she's not in a ton of the movie, but the bits that she had were pivotal and, dare I say, captivating, dude. She really still has it at... At her age, it was so impressive from a performance standpoint to see how much she could still command my attention. You know? So I was worried they were going to go Sally from the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, yeah, yeah, versus yeah. <laughs> versus Lori from Halloween 2018. But yeah. luckily, he finds like an inter spot like in between yeah. the two. <laughs> um, yeah. because, because what happens happens pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I was like, damn, really already? Shit. Okay. All right. Um, oh uh, yeah. I know what you're referring to now. You know <laughs> what I mean? I was like, okay, well that's faster than I would have thought would have happened if you have a trilogy planned out and yeah. same with the, uh, with the bonus feature at the end, you know, mm -hmm. I thought that happened. I thought we were going to get that. I thought that would play more into the story of the second film. And mm. then it would lead, which perhaps, it and will. then it would I mean, lead yeah. to something that would be a final sort of confrontation in the third film. That's mm. what I thought. By the way, we've already gotten confirmation that Exorcist Believer came out this month. Exorcist Deceiver is the second one coming out yeah. a year from now, and then it hasn't been officially announced. But someone posited in one of our streams, and I think they're probably right that the third one will be Exorcist Redeemer. So it'll be Believer, Deceiver, Redeemer. Well, I definitely like the the wordplay of the you know subtitling. That's that's cool. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I think yeah. that's really fucking smart. I yeah. I made the joke. It was gonna be Exorcist Believer, Exorcist Deceiver, and Exorcist Just Lever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. All right. So segue. Well, we we talked about the acting, right? We did. Um, yeah. So so let's segue into the filmmaking. Mm. I think it was really well done. I I enjoyed a lot of what happened i think the directing and the editing had to work hand in hand on this one because there were there were things that were shown in the main course quote unquote so to speak that had flashes show up <clears throat> that showed weird grotesque imagery mm -hmm. right uh imagery actually that were some of those images were more callbacks to the original exorcist than the rest of the film was with the completely white demon face and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so a lot of really interesting choices, both directorially and editorially. And I think they work together brilliantly. So the filmmaking, in my opinion, in this, the directing and the editing worked hand in hand. I mean, I can echo those sentiments because of the fact that, um, you know, DGG, as I keep calling him all the damn time. DGG! Um, <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, he he put together something, especially in like more so in the third act than than any other spot in the film, where you were having a lot of those jumps back and forth between you know just the nastiness of the imagery and then the things that are actually happening in the real world. Uh, that's where I felt like the the film shined the most, as far as like those quick little like sporadic edits and stuff. Okay. Damn, not a lot really to say beyond that because the it 
it did you does, like how it, it was shot and everything? How it was oh, presented? Oh, I totally did. I totally did, man. It, 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 in some ways, I, I even said this to the woman when we were leaving. It does kind of feel like the tale of two films in some ways because of the fact that I, I felt like it was a very slower and plotting sort of first half. And then when we got to the actual, you know, more emphasis on the exorcism aspect, it went more to those quick, like, hyper edits and stuff. And so um, both of them worked well. It, it showed the fact that, you know, Chip was getting real as far as the confrontation aspect goes in the second half. And so, um, yeah, yeah it, but, let, but, but it melded and blended very well. So I was going to piggyback and say, let me see if you agree with this. The first hmm. hour, we're cruising along at about 30 miles per hour. And then the last act, we, we bump up to like 60. It was like we got on the freeway. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. And that's yeah. a good scale to continue with the rest of the trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. We'll see where we land at the beginning of the next one. Are we still at 60 or did we drop back down to 40? You know what I mean? And like, and I would imagine that they will take an exit and they will like explore the relationship between a couple characters that we see at the very end. And so they will probably slow things down. Um, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get that much exploration there. We might get uh, a little exploration not. of one of the characters, but maybe not the other. So I guess finally the thing we want to talk about are the effects. Uh, there was a, a, What was great is this was a largely practical movie. There mm -hmm. was a couple incidents, uh, excuse me, instances of mm -hmm. CG, but it was... It was so modern. It was a it scene, basically, yeah. and it was short, and it and it had its own point to make. So mm -hmm. you didn't really focus on the CG of it and uh, and all of the exorcist stuff, you know, or the possession stuff that was amazing in the first film as they transformed Linda Blair. Like, that's all front and center in this film yeah. as well. So the practical and the special makeup effects were fantastic in this film. Yeah, dude, the makeup most notably. What they, like, the transformation aspect for both of these girls was downright frightening you know because when we see them in those initial instances when they are just so you know derpily delightfully happy and yet going to kind of tempt fate so to speak and then what happens and just the rapid downgrade of their appearance and everything from like you know the the hair being missing to the pronounced foreheads and you know the upside down cross and the, the forehead feet and, and the yeah. reasoning for the way the feet look was fucking killer. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, dude. Yeah, and and they actually there is discussion at one particular point as about to why, why yeah the feet would have an emphasis, and it was maybe, so fucked up. I was like, God, first, that's so cool. Yeah, it's it's maybe the first exorcism film where I have like exorcism of all you know if we're talking like Emily Rose or like all kinds of yeah. other really strong entries in the genre. This is the first one that I can remember where they explored that yep. specificity of that sort of thing happening. Which agreed. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, agreed. And and it yeah. led into that shocking moment towards the end of the film. Mm. So yeah. it, it was honestly, yeah. like, without spoiling anything, this was a really well done exorcism movie. I love the It's a great music sequel. Too, oh score yeah, the was, music. Sound design and music was great. Hand. So I don't think the sound design was leaned into quite as heavily in this one as it was in the first film, but it was yeah, not, not it was not fun. poorly done. It was really well yeah. done. Just wasn't leaned to leaned into as heavily. The score though, like you said, was yeah. phenomenal throughout mm -hmm. with with callbacks and and straight up recreations of tubular bells and yeah. other exorcist themes and stuff like that but overall mm -hmm. the music was noticeably engaging and environment setting and really really well done yeah so it was it was definitely modernized but yet still in like the tasteful reverence of the you know stuff that they were trying to update a little bit and that's what the best legacy films of this nature really do is they they show respect to the you know source material obviously but they update it they sequelize it they they continue the story and make it captivating for a new audience and hopefully people who can you know check out the original film which is <laughs> it's it's crazy to think that the original exorcist is 50 years old now so. uh, it is really crazy <laughs> yeah man <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for our discussion on The Exorcist Believer. Why don't you guys let us know in the comments down below if you've seen it. What did you think? Are you someone that could find the positives that we found? Or are you someone that was kind of against the movie from the beginning? Like, I'm surprised at the mid 
yeah. level. Like I, I've seen two other YouTubers that have already broken their uh, embargo and mm -hmm. put up their reviews after the movie. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of big ones too, but yeah. you know, friends. I'm not here to call them out. But yeah, but, yeah, some some friends of ours too. But they're, both they're just... both of them like <laughs> both one of them, them didn't like it, and the other one was it said it was mid. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get that. Like, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I think outside of Emily Rose and The Last Exorcism, I think this is up there in maybe the top five exorcism movies I've seen. The first Exorcist, Emily Rose, Last Exorcism, and then, you know, this would be four or five for me. Yeah, this one... This one doesn't top Exorcist three because I I love. See, I don't. Movie. I've only seen so that one time. I know it's yeah. it's. Everyone talks about it now like it's an absolute classic, but I've only seen it one time. Oh, it was totally crapped on when it first came out because it was yeah. so drastically different, and you know, uh, but I don't know. This this is very much in a totally different ilk in that regard, and I can't. It's like apples to oranges sort of comparison as far as exorcism stuff goes because that film. George C. Scott, everything about it is, you know, it didn't even want to be an Exorcist movie, but it still has the label, and so for that reason, I'll, I'll lump it into the category, so. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, uh, I think that's going to do it, you guys. Let us know what yeah. your thoughts are in those comments down below. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel the way that you do. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining me, Fuego. I appreciate that. Oh, and, no, uh... I'm so happy to, man. The <laughs> fact that the school schedule allowed for me to, you know, get on in. I, I miss doing this stuff with you, man. <laughs> so this is going to go up first thing tomorrow, and then I will put up our review of Saw X, um, Saw 10, which we're going to record right after this, and then I will put up our review of Totally Killer, which I might be doing solo because I'm going to see it solo tomorrow night. Yeah, um, get to see it a little ahead of the A couple prime of days ahead of the Prime Friday. debut, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I think that that means our reviews tend to do better when it's available, mm -hmm. like on streaming the day our yeah. review goes up, well, I think a lot also, more people are searching for reviews about it. And also kind of a pseudo hail that Cecil and I are going to be doing is Pet Cemetery Bloodline, which is a prequel to the 2019 film that him and I reviewed here on the channel as well. So that'll be coming back. next week. And this Sunday, we also plan to record the next, it, uh, the next installment of the, uh, Stephen King book tier list ranking. Yeah. So we have six new books to add to the tier list, and we're going to be doing that on Sunday and presenting that in the near future as well. So Fuego <laughs> bringing hail back to the channel for uh, for a limited in a couple of engagements coming up. Yeah, because we really be on, do need to do. It the, can be on both, man. I, I, I that's just, true. Well, I'll I'll whitelist it so you can put it on 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 in Fuego Tayman as well, of course. Uh, but but yeah, we need to we need to do the rest of those Stephen King tier lists. So there's some good stuff in there later, and uh, you know Billy Summers and um, no, you know, I mean it, like the if the, it bleeds. We had a bunch more to do, somewhere. right? We had the TV there's movies. No, no, oh, we well, had, yeah, if we're talking about all of that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So all right, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to it soon. Yeah. But uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. Woo! Until next time, I've been Cecil Laird and Gracias up in Jaime and Fuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. Scared.